What is going on guys, Alex here and welcome to another video. Welcome to episode 3 of the Shopify Challenge series. Now if you watched the previous two episodes you would have seen me go out there and find a winning product and then also build a one product store around that product showing you all the apps and everything that you need installed to increase your average order value, your conversion rate and so forth. So hopefully you've followed along throughout this journey so far. If you haven't then be sure to check out the previous episodes after this episode here. Now in today's episode I'm going to be showing you my exact Facebook ads launch strategy and also analyzing the results after 48 hours of launching this product so it's a new 2020 strategy that's been working really really well for me so I've screen recorded everything so far step by step as I go along as I set up the campaign and reveal my strategy and everything throughout launching this product so if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you're new here be sure to subscribe turn on that notification bell and let's get into today's content Okay, so the Facebook ads launch strategy that we're going to be doing throughout this challenge. So what we're going to do is test two different creatives. So the thing that we're going to change, the variable within each creative is the first five to seven seconds of the video because this is the most important part of your video ad. It's what's going to capture your audience's tension and um, stimulate that high click-through rate and therefore progression of your audience throughout your funnel. So the first five to seven seconds is by far the most important part. So you want to split test different intros to each of your video ads so when creating your video ad you want to make sure that the first five to seven seconds is really really eye-catching it's fast paced straight to the point and really highlight the benefits of the product you don't want it to be boring or slow paced because people are just going to scroll past now i'm not going to cover throughout this challenge how to actually create video ads themselves because i've covered that throughout other challenges i've got video ad creation tutorials on my youtube channel go and check them out if you're not sure how to create high converting video ads and secondly, our testing budget is going to be 20 times our product retail price. So I'm selling the product for $10. So it's a very low ticket item. And as we've discussed earlier, we're really trying to ramp up the average order value um, using various apps that I've previously spoke about throughout the challenge. So in this case, 20 times the $10 means that my testing budget is going to be $200. So if your product price is $30, then your testing budget, you want it to be about, around about $600 if your budget can allow that. Because obviously the higher the price your item is, the harder it is to sell and the higher your cost per conversion will be. When you've got a low ticket item like I've got here, it's really, really easy to get a high conversion rate um, and therefore a low cost per purchase. So you don't need to spend as much to test a product. You just need to split test it with different interests, different creatives and find what works for your product. And thirdly, that means we're going to have 10 different ad sets, each a $20 per ad set budget and therefore a total of 20 ads because we've got two different ads ad creatives per ad set. Fourthly, we're gonna have one interest per ad set. So, so that's the variable that we're gonna be testing within each of our ad sets here. And then obviously we've got a different variable within our ads here. So we've got two different variables that we're testing and hopefully we find out what the optimal conditions are so we know um, what's the best um, in terms of scaling and moving forward. And finally, we're gonna be targeting e-packet countries because this way you get a reasonably good conversion rate and also the shipping time is lower compared to just random countries worldwide where the shipping can take like 40 plus days. Okay, so just to quickly cover the overall setup of our campaign that we're going to be launching. So we're going to have one campaign, which is going to be a conversion campaign optimizing for purchase divided into 10 different ad sets with a budget of $200, so $20 per ad set. So now variables that we're testing at the ad set level is a different interest for each ad set. So we're gonna have 10 interests in total. Then within each ad set, we're gonna have two different ads, so 20 ads in total. So two variables at the ad level. So each ad is gonna have a $10 budget and each ad set a $20 budget, given the total budget for our launch at $200. So this is the general structure that you want to aim for when launching your campaign. Now, obviously, it's going to vary depending on the price of the product or the type of the product um, that you're selling. But generally, this is the kind of overall thing that you want to aim for. Definitely works better nowadays to test multiple ad creatives. I know it takes a little bit more time by amending the beginning of each video ad to make it different. So you can test different variables, but it definitely works well because generally you'll find one which works considerably better than the other and then you can obviously optimize from there by removing the ad which performs worse and you always want to test at least 10 different interests um, when launching a new product um, obviously the more you test the better and you want to keep the audience sizes 
and you'll see in a minute when I go to actually set up the campaign, um, you want to aim for audiences between 1 million and 5 million in size um, when targeting the e-packet countries for each interest. You don't want them to be too small, but you don't want them to be too large either. So you'll see all that in a minute when I go to set up the campaign. And so analyzing the data for our campaign launch. So what we're going to do is leave it for 24 to 36 hours. Now, this really depends on the price of the product. Generally, if your product is priced higher, you're going to have to leave it longer because your conversion window is going to be longer. Your cost per purchase is going to be higher. You're not going to get purchases as quick as a low ticket item like the one I have here, just $10. If your product is, say, $50, it's going to take longer to see conversions come through. So you're going to have to leave it for longer, maybe even 48 hours um, before you start thinking about deleting or scaling ad sets. And secondly, once you've launched your product for 24 to 36 hours, you want to see if there's a clear winner between your creatives. So at the ad level, you want to see which one's performing better, which one's performing worse and optimize from there. And hopefully we can find one where there's a clear winner where the data clearly shows that one is massively outperforming the other and it's not just due to luck. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do this properly in a bit. And thirdly, after this 24 to 36 hour time frame, you want to kill ad sets with no sales. So if you're selling a higher ticket item, you want to leave the ad set to run until break even point. And finally, you want to duplicate ad sets with sales twice. So by combining point three and four, we're removing what isn't working and then duplicating and replicating what is working and scaling up from there to get more sales. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and create the campaign for our product. So what we're going to do is run a conversion campaign. And we're just going to call it the name of the product, so foot pain reliever. And you want to make sure you've got your campaign budget optimization turned off because when testing products, it's definitely best to manage the budget at the ad set level. So we just click continue there. And so the conversion event, we want to optimize for purchase. So we're just going to select purchase here. It doesn't matter if you haven't had purchases before. Um, Facebook knows who the pocket of people are most likely to purchase anyway. So just select purchase here regardless of if you've had purchases before. All this stuff here you can just leave and as well as the dynamic creative and offer here you can just leave as well as it is. So now we're going to create our first audience. So we're just going to click edit here and then we just want to select our locations to be ePacket countries. So what I'm going to do is go to browse and save locations and ePacket countries here. So these are the countries I always target when testing a product. Now you can go to Google and find this list really easily just by searching ePacket countries. And what you want to do is just save it down in your locations here so you can easily access it every time you create a new campaign. And we're just going to amend the age to 21 to 65. Keep it on all genders. So now we're going to go ahead and select our first interest for this ad set. So the sort of people that are going to be wanting a product like this to relieve pain in the foot are people who get things like cramp. So I'm going to search cramp just to see what comes up. So we've got cramp here. As you can see, it's quite a big audience, um, 15 million. So I'm just going to narrow that down a bit um, with a different uh, word. So just put foot there, just so it relates specifically to foot cramp there. And I'm also going to exclude people who drop ship um, just so my ad's less likely to be seen by the drop shippers and therefore copied. And you want to deselect here, expand detailed targeting. For now, um, when you're testing a product, you really want to specifically test each individual interest. Um, so you don't want to expand detailed targeting. So that's put the potential reach to 2.3 million, which falls in our 1 to 5 million range nicely. So this is the sort of audience size you want to aim for um, when testing each interest. And you don't want to overanalyze each and every interest. Um, you really want to just see what suggestions come up um, and then think, does this relate to the product or the audience that are likely to buy this product? Um, and then here you just want to amend the language to be English. If your ad is in English, that is, because obviously if your ad's in English, you don't want to serve it to people who don't speak English. And then you want to select manual placements here. You want to deselect all of these here. And then the only ones we want is Facebook news feed, Instagram feed, and Facebook videos feed. These are the best for cold traffic and getting quick conversions. So it's the best when testing a product. So the budget and schedule, we're going to put it at $20 
per day. So as we spoke about earlier, $20 per ad set, 10 different ad sets, so a $200 budget for my product. So it's around 7 p.m. here. Um, so I'm going to run it starting from now. And by the time it's approved, it should be at the start of tomorrow, um, ready to launch throughout. So I'm going to run my ad set starting um, today at 7 p.m. here. So by the time it's approved, um, it should be ready to launch um, throughout tomorrow. And then these you can just leave as they are. Then what you want to do is click continue and you'll either have a page post ready and to go or you can upload your video ad that you've already created um, ready to launch this campaign. Okay, so once you've done that and you've published it, you should have a one campaign in review and within that campaign you've got one ad set and one ad. So now what we need to do is duplicate the ad within the ad set. So what I'm going to do is select this here and then click duplicate here. And then you want to duplicate it in the original campaign and we just want one more copy so we have two different ads within that ad set. Click duplicate there. Then once you've duplicated it, you should have your ad here and then a copy of the ad. Now all we need to do is go in and edit that and upload our varied um, video ad. So the one with the difference in the first five to seven seconds of the video, the kind of variable that we're split testing. So once you've done that, you should have two different videos each with a different five to seven second intro on the video um, within your ad set here. So we've got one campaign. So we've got one campaign, one ad set, and then two different video ads for this ad set. So now all we need to do is go into our ad set here and duplicate this because remember we're going to test 10 different interests um, at the ad set level. So we just need to select this here, click duplicate. And we're going to put number nine here, keep it within the original campaign, and that'll give us 10 in total ad sets within the campaign. And then within each ad set, we've got our two different video ads that we're split testing. Click duplicate there. Okay, so once you've done that, you should have one campaign with 10 different ad sets. And then within each ad set, we've got two different ads, so a total of 20 different ads here. So here's our published ad set here that's in review, the one that we created earlier. Now all we need to do is go into each one of these and amend the targeting um, for each ad set. So just go in and change the interest, make sure it's one to five million and obviously specific to the product that you're gonna be testing. So simply just go in here, edit, and then you just go down to where your targeting is. And then all we need to do is amend the interest here. So just mix up this with the, within each ad set um, just so you can test, split test different interests to see which ones work well. Okay, so once you've done that, you should have your campaign here. Then within your campaign, you should have your 10 different ad sets here, each divided by different interests, so like joint and foot pain, bone and foot, like pain, um, foot, Achilles heel, and so forth. So different interests relating to your product so we can test and see what the results are for each ad set. And then we can know then we know what to scale, what to kill, and how to move forward from there. And then within each ad set, you should have your two different ads here with a slight variation in the video so we can test which one works well and we can find the optimal conditions in which to scale and move forward from. So once this campaign launches, we can then leave it for 24 to 36 hours and then go ahead and review the data and the results and stuff to see how this launch has panned out and see if we can get sales and stuff as quickly as possible. So here are the ad sets for this campaign here. And as you can see that most of the ad sets are performing really, really well, which is unusual because normally you have maybe two or three which do well and the rest don't do very well. But I think about seven out of the 10 ad sets are really, really profitable so far. So if you just look at the return on ad spend here in the last column, as you can see, we've got 5.81, 1.36, which is unprofitable. We've got 6.31, 4.64, 0.85, not profitable. 6.37 our only ad set here without any sales at all and then we've got a really good ad set here 11.97 return on ad spend and then 4.93 here giving an average of 5.06 return on ad spend at the campaign level giving a total of $1,500 in conversion value of less than $300 spent so far so it's really really profitable campaign launch here now this can be fairly common, especially with low ticket items because you can get sales and impulse purchases really, really quickly if you market the product correctly. So with a great video ad, great ad copy, a great product page and really branding your store well to get a really high conversion rate like this here.
Now it's been about 40 hours or maybe a bit more since I've launched this campaign and I haven't even turned off the low performing ad sets because the campaign is so profitable overall um, there's no need at the minute I'm just going to wait to see if any sales start to come in on some of these lower performing ad sets here. Now I'm not sure how far I'll actually be able to take this at the minute or this product due to supplier issues and so forth um, because of the coronavirus but I'm going to see how far I can take it and see if I can scale this store further. Okay, so that is it for today. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I hope you go out there and apply the strategies that I've taught you throughout this video and throughout the previous videos as well in the Shopify challenge. Now, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell because I've got more videos coming very soon and I'll see you very soon in the next video.